Let me ask you a question. Which would you say is the richest country in Europe? I'm sure many of you are thinking Switzerland, Germany, or maybe even Ireland. But actually, no, none of these. Excluding micro city states like Monaco or Liechtenstein, the richest country in all of Europe by far is none other than Luxembourg. In fact, Luxembourg is the country with the highest GDP per capita on the planet. If we had to define Luxembourg's economy in one sentence, we could say that it is the country where unemployment does not exist, and where one month's average salary is almost enough to go on an all-inclusive year-long vacation in the Caribbean. To give you an idea, the average salary in Luxembourg is over $5,800 per month, and we are talking about the average salary. I don't even want to tell you what the most senior or qualified workers in the country earn. Naturally, as you can imagine, these seductive working conditions make many European citizens from other countries decide to move to Luxembourg in search of the best possible life. So much so that immigrants account for nearly 50% of its total population. After all, who would want to miss the opportunity to move to the most prosperous country in the world? Who would want to give up a promising future and a virtually assured economic bonanza? Well, keep watching very carefully, because despite statistics and appearances, the truth is that Luxembourg's success could be disappearing completely. Take a look. As you can see in this graph, until 2008, Luxembourg was an example of economic development. Its economy was growing at almost vertical rates, and the truth is that nothing seemed to be able to slow it down. However, 15 years ago, something changed. Suddenly, Luxembourg's economy stagnated. Economic growth vanished. It was as if its economic momentum had run out of gas overnight. The question is, what happened? Why did such a slowdown occur? In this video, we're going to talk about the curse that is plaguing Luxembourg. We will explain what made it so rich, and we will tell you why its successful economic model started failing 15 years ago. Are you ready? Well, let's get started. If you want to know what is going wrong in Luxembourg, the first thing we need to know is what the formula was that had made this country rich in the first place, and then find out why that formula seems to have stopped working. And yes, I know what many of you are thinking, what a thing to say. It's pretty clear, Luxembourg is a tax haven. The recipe for success is basically to have very low taxes. That's not so complicated. Well, if you think so, you're completely wrong. Because in reality, Luxembourg has been a wealthy country for hundreds of years. In fact, one sector that was absolutely central to Luxembourg's economic growth from 1870 to 1970 was the steel industry. You see, historically, and thanks to its excellent position in the geographical centre of industrial Europe, that is, close to countries such as Belgium, France and Germany, Luxembourg was able to develop a huge steel industry with the most competitive companies in the world and the most advanced technological processes of the time. This specialisation in metallurgical production allowed this country of only 600,000 inhabitants to become one of the largest steel exporters in the world, to the point that many skyscrapers in large large US cities such as Chicago or New York were built with Luxembourg steel. I'm pretty sure you didn't see that one coming. But it is also true that not all of Luxembourg's success was forged thanks to its metallurgical industry. Starting in the 1970s, this country began to expand into the financial sector. And as you can probably guess, yes, it was from then on that its low taxes started to play in favour of the country's economic growth. To give you an idea, Luxembourg taxation was so enticing that holding companies only had to pay 1% of their profits in taxes. In other words, up to 30 times less than what most companies pay today in other European countries such as Germany. Thanks to this, many of the new and giant tech startups, companies like Spotify, Amazon, and Skype set up their core business in Luxembourg City, creating numerous jobs, productive clusters, and basically the whole massive economic growth cycle we have seen in the previous graph. In addition, another element that characterised Luxembourg's success was the development of a huge and advanced banking sector, a sector that was the perfect complement for the development of both foreign and local companies that were attracted to the country. So in summary, we could say that Luxembourg's economy rested on two pillars, a strong technology sector and a strong banking sector, two sectors that were absolutely key to the country's prosperity. In military terms, we could say that they were two real supersonic missiles. However, visual economic viewers, as we have already seen, the bad news did not take long to arrive. And today, Luxembourg has even become an incipient concern for the upper echelons of Europe. Luxembourg must address structural issues, EU warns. But what is the reason for this change? What on earth could explain Luxembourg's wealth formula no longer working? Well, we're going to take a look at that right now. A giant with feet of clay. 
pay close attention to the following graph. What you are seeing is the evolution of the productivity of Luxembourg companies in the service sector in recent years. This graph divides the companies according to their productivity. And what you can see is that since 2008, the most advanced companies, as well as the medium sized and the laggards, have suffered a significant drop in their productivity levels. And naturally, in a small and rich country like Luxembourg, this service sector plays an absolutely fundamental role in the economy. Specifically, about 80% of its GDP comes from this sector. So you can imagine what a huge problem it is that this sector is performing so poorly. But why has all this happened? In other words, what has happened to cause Luxembourg's service sector to have such serious productivity problems? Well, one of the answers is the lack of qualified personnel in the sector. Since companies have many problems hiring workers with a suitably high technical level. In other words, in Luxembourg, there is a severe shortage of highly productive workers, and that affects the performance of companies. For example, look at the following graph. Here, you can see the percentage of companies in each country that had difficulties in hiring highly qualified personnel in 2018. And according to the OECD, Luxembourg is, along with the Netherlands, a country with the most problems doing just that. So because of this lack of manpower, Luxembourg companies cannot innovate enough. They find it more difficult to adapt to new sectors, to assimilate changes. They have more problems digitizing. And this is even a major barrier for adopting innovative production techniques. There are simply not enough qualified personnel. And I know what you're wondering, but why does Luxembourg have so many problems attracting qualified profiles to its country? Well, the reality is that the reports that talk about the problem do not offer a concrete answer. But at the end of the day, Luxembourg is a very small country. And as we have said, it is also a country with an extremely high proportion of immigrants. All of this means that, for example, renting a normal three bedroom house in the center of the capital can cost around $3,000 per month. And even if salaries are very high, this could be a huge barrier for workers who want to move to the country. In short, if Luxembourg wants to recover its productivity and make its companies grow, it has to start training its workers intensely, either through in-company training programs or by improving its own education system. And it must also succeed in attracting acting better profiles at all costs. Of course, Luxembourg's problems do not end there, not by a long shot. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned the great importance of the financial sector, and especially the banking industry, in the economic development of Luxembourg in recent decades. Well, although this sector is still very important today, the truth is that banks in Luxembourg are no longer what they used to be, as is the case in the technology sector. Luxembourg banks are losing productivity and generating less and less added value. This may seem unimportant, but the reality is that Luxembourg banking has become one of the least profitable banks in Europe, far behind even those of countries as unimpressive as Spain or Italy. But why is it so difficult for Luxembourg banks to increase their profitability? Basically, because competition in this sector is enormous. There are approximately 130 different banks in Luxembourg, a huge number considering that we are talking about a country with a population of only 640,000. Of course, that also has an upside for the country. So no, even if it does cause profitability problems, it can't explain the decline of the Luxembourg financial sector, nor the decline of its economy. Beyond everything we've just told, you, there are three main reasons for the stagnation and decline of the fundamental sectors of the Luxembourg economy. You could say they are three reasons that are seriously damaging the foundations of its economic structure. Do you want to know exactly what reasons we're talking about? Well, let's go. The triad of the crisis. I'm sure many of you have already noticed one thing at the beginning of this video. Luxembourg's big problems started right back in 2008, the year of the great financial crisis. A crisis that hit the country very, very hard. Something quite reasonable, considering the importance of banking in its economy. So after this crisis, the Luxembourg government decided to take measures to avoid a financial bubble ever being able to seriously affect the country or even lead it to bankruptcy in the future. These measures consisted of a series of tough and strict regulations. The problem? The problem is that that the regulations went too far. Luxembourg today has one of the most complex set of banking regulations in all of Europe. Remember the profitability problems we used to see Luxembourg's banks having? Well, you can see where we're heading, but it doesn't end there. It turns out that Luxembourg not only has tougher financial regulations than many other countries in Europe, but its labor regulations in many professions are also very extensive and costly. 
So it seems that while Luxembourg is very liberal in matters such as taxes, at the bureaucratic and regulatory level, the situation is completely different. And of course, labour regulation takes the cake. In fact, despite various reforms that the government has made to try to make these labour regulations more flexible, Luxembourg is one of the European Union countries with the most rigid and stringent regulations. This, of course, does the country no favours in recruiting the professionals that it needs. The OECD itself estimates that if Luxembourg were to eliminate some of these excessive regulations, it could have up to 0.5% higher GDP growth in the long term. So, to summarise, the first factor that is weighing Luxembourg down is excessive regulations. Now then, do you want to know the second reason? The second reason is zombies. Well, more like zombie companies. You see, according to The Economist, Adelette McGowan, these zombie companies are those that, having been in existence for more than 10 years, have been unable to meet their interest payments with their own profits during the last few years. Basically, they are companies that have problems of non-payment on a continuous basis and that cannot carry out their activity as they should. In other words, these are companies that are not dead yet, but they don't have the life of a profitable company either. So they are precisely just like zombies. The problem with these types of companies is that they cause a humongous waste of resources. That is, all their machinery and employees are devoting their efforts to a zombie, instead of being in other companies taking advantage of their capabilities in a much more productive way. And guess what? It turns out that Luxembourg ranks fifth for the OECD country with the highest loss of leverage caused by zombie companies. The question is, why does Luxembourg have so many zombie companies? According to an OECD report, this is due to its public insolvency system. That is, the body in charge of declaring a company bankrupt, which works rather poorly and punishes entrepreneurs whose business has gone bad. For example, entrepreneurs who have suffered a business failure are required by law to wait a minimum of three years before starting another business, which slows down the dynamism of the private sector. Likewise, many banks may prefer to continue financing these companies rather than accepting their bankruptcy, a process that is much more complicated than in other countries. In this way, many of the companies that should go bankrupt because their business model has not worked stay afloat, slowing down the economy. Because of these bad insolvency procedures, the economy does not adjust as it should. And it is precisely this lack of adjustment in the economy that has a lot to do with our third reason, research and development. <laughs> What can I say, visual economic viewers? There is one thing that is very clear. Research and development are fundamental activities for the economic growth of countries. Furthermore, there are studies such as the one by the OECD in 2015 that have found a very strong relationship between R&D spending and productivity. In other words, if you want more productive workers, spending on R&D to train them is a good solution for that. In addition, a trained worker can switch from one job to another without major difficulties, which is very important during crises. By the way, remember Luxembourg's problem with productivity? Well, look at this chart. Luxembourg spends only 1.2% of its GDP on R&D, one of the OECD countries that spends the least on these items. So it's no surprise that they have so many problems increasing their productivity. But it is also that, in addition, the government does not offer incentives to companies to increase these investment rates. Since 2018, the government decided to eliminate practically all aid to companies making efforts to reverse this trend. In short, in order to return to the productivity growth it had in the past, the Luxembourg government, along with the companies that operate there, will have to make an effort to increase investment in R&D. By the way, if you want to go even deeper into the problems that plague this country, we'll leave you some references in the description. Once again, at this point in the video, it's time to turn it over to all of you in our visual economic community. What do you think of Luxembourg's economy? Do you think it will be able to fix its problems, or will it end up being surpassed in wealth by other countries, such as Ireland, for example? Do you know of any other problems in this country that we have not had time to mention? You can leave your answers in the comments. Remember that you can highlight your contributions with the thank you button, and that by doing so, you can also financially support the independent media that is visual economic. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, activate the little bell so you don't miss any of the following videos, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care, see you soon.